all stand and go before the Lord in prayer. Are there, there any other, are there any unspoken prayer requests? You can make them known by the raising of your hands. God, we bow with us all by our heads in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to come before your throne of grace, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for bless us to gather together, Lord, once again in this place of worship this evening, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the word and your visitation of your spirit that we had upon this uh, morning and afternoon service, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your spirit that is in this place this evening, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you look for all the prayer requests that have been submitted before you, Lord. Touch and move in each and every one of them, Lord, according to your will. Lord, we ask for us to prepare our hearts to receive your word. Lord, let your word fall upon good ground, Lord, and take root in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen.
going to worship and he's in the house tonight. And how many of y'all know that God is in the building? Yeah. Yeah. I feel good down in my center. Oh. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. 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 We want to thank New York Tabernacle Family Choir for help lead us in praise and worship. Amen. Amen. At this time, we would like to minister Allen and the ushers to come to receive this evening's offer. Amen. Amen. Let us remember Saints Tuesday on our fasting and prayer day. We'll be fasting all day and praying that day for revival of the lost loved ones. And also let us remember, uh, coming up this Saturday, is our spring cleaning. Yeah. If you have not signed up, please sign up for our spring cleaning. Minister Adams, please bless the offer.
good God is in the house right now. Loving God is in the house right now. Hallelujah. Our strength, our help, our hope. Would you be sensitive to Him? Scripture is true. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Yes. Amen. 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 Be thankful for the presence of God. Amen. Really, in His presence, you can find peace. Bishop talked to us this morning about the peace of God. Amen. In the presence of God, you can find peace. Sometimes it's all right to slow down and lift your hands. Sometimes it's all right to slow down and just bask in the presence of the Lord. Anybody, amen, feel like that from time to time? Yes, Praise God, amen. I, I thank God uh, for what he's done, for what he's doing. I thank God, amen, for the, the powerful moves of God. You know, when people walk in and instantly they fill with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I, I've seen it, maybe you've seen it, where drunks come off the street, get filled with the Holy Ghost, and walk out sober. Amen. I, I've seen the Lord do some tremendous things. I've seen healing. Anybody seen somebody get healed? Legs straighten out in services. Where, amen. When they come together and, and, and they walk in, and one leg shorter than the other, and they walk out, praise God, and they, and they ain't limping no more. Amen. But I also appreciate the times when the Spirit of the Lord moves in just to touch the heart of every individual in the house. Amen. Anybody thankful for that? Amen. For the presence of the Lord when it comes in. It's just a beautiful presence. One more time, will you lift your hands to Him and just love on Him? Amen. Just, just love the Lord. Just love the Lord.
it says, how do you keep it about a uh, heathen whose mind is stayed upon Jesus to keep them in perfect peace? Because we pray this world each day, if you look at the news, you know what I'm saying, it seems like each day things are just getting dark and dark. But I know that there is a, that I know that in my heart there is peace because I know that the Lord is still in control. Amen. No matter, you know, you know, certain times, you know, people really don't understand sometimes the seriousness, seriousness of a situation. But to really have to really know the power of God and what the peace of God is working, is you gotta know the seriousness of the situation and see that God is still in control and it's God that's keeping everything. Uh, everything together. You know, because saints, to be honest with you, you know, when I was coming up there, they said it was a threat of nuclear war. You know, and I thought that one day was past, but guess what? Here we are again. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you that I'm not worried because God is in control. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. How many of you trust God's in control? Amen.
the sin. And he is Lord. 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 Thank you. 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 Your joy. Jesus. 
But they had a Christ-centered perspective, which we need also. Yes. But Peter and John replied, which is it right in God's eyes to listen to you or to him? And then they turned around and said, you be the judge. Oh, man. It's a wonderful thing, folks, to really have a Christ-centered perspective. You won't play hooky for you. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. the truth. You won't even rob God. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. You must understand, amen, God is the reason we exist. Our lives are in his hands. Mm -hmm. And he created us with a purpose in mind. Yes, he did, preacher. Mm -hmm. Whether or not we acknowledge him, he is in control. Yes, he is. A minister from the 1600s made a powerful statement. He said, we have a necessary, constant dependence upon his providence. You know what that said? His economy. You see that? It's happening in Russia. Even to those who don't really believe. But they have to depend on what the Lord has provided. Regardless of their faith in God, they still have to depend on what the Lord has provided. Would you clap your hands into the Lord? As the stream, as upon the spring, and the beans upon the sun, everything depends on the Lord. That's right. Everything. Amen. It's amazing how people, amen, put their nose up. Well, but they can't live or move uh -huh. in their being without God. Amen. It's amazing what's happening in our society. God doesn't want just part of us. He wants us to live and move and have our being through him. That's right. Yes, Lord. I like what Brother Allen did this morning. Had y'all do a left face, right face, out face. You couldn't do that without the Lord. Without the Lord. Lift up your hands. You can't do that without the Lord. Hallelujah. You got, we walked in here. You couldn't walk in here without the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's thank the Lord for that. Hallelujah. We need to remind ourselves we can't do anything. If we are honest with ourselves, I wrote a few things uh, and I wrote this down. A Christ in the perspective. You see our circumstances in light of eternity. And his work in the world. It's amazing. It's amazing how people don't understand what a Christ-centered perspective is. Right. Then there's a Christ-centered values. Right. Generosity. This is the core Christian values of being kind and unselfish, especially with our money and power. Good, good preaching, good preaching. It amazes me, amen, how uh, people call themselves saints of God and they don't even have a Christ-centered perspective. Sister LaWanda, she travels. I believe round trip was about 50, 50, 60 miles. You know why she do that? She has a Christ-centered perspective. Yeah. Let's clap your hands up to the Lord and thank the Lord for it. 
of Christ-centered perspective. What is Christ-centered relationship for God to be in control of your life? Mm -hmm. God is right. Amen. The Christ-centered perspective approach life with a Christ-centered perspective. But God's centered life is one that revolves around the character. That's right. Go ahead, preacher. Amen. Amen. Right. Faithful. And then I wrote this. The decisions are made from him with him. That Christ said based upon that Christ said.
in this life. Yeah, that's the truth. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Right, so, so Glory. Respect him. Will you clap your hands up to the Lord? Yeah. 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 You know, uh, you have to get to the place in any decisions that you make. Include the Lord in it. You cannot go wrong. Include the Lord in every decision that you make. You will discover that's how the Lord will actually bless you if you have a real relationship that I call a self, I mean, a Christ sent Glory. You know, it amazes me how even the Apostle Paul on his missionary journeys. He wasn't well received. That's right. Yes, that's None of the apostles were real well received. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. On the Apostle Paul missionary journey, he didn't have no train. Hello? Well. No airplane. Well. Most of the places he went, he walked. He walked. Got on the boat and they were slow. Preach. You know, and we have a tendency. We got the internet, we got the cell phone. Hello? Uh huh. Yes, sir. We got our mom and we sit down on Jesus. How we're going to fill this church. Coming together, one mind accord, mm -hmm. having a Christ centered perspective. Yeah. You know what it calls you to do while you in the supermarket? Excuse me, man. Here is the right. call from my church. Yeah. Yeah. I want to invite you. The New Birth Tabernacle. Amen. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, you will be surprised at the result you will receive. Yeah. If you have a Christ-centered perspective, people that you would like to church will come. You can show up at outreach all you want to. If you don't have a Christ-centered perspective, don't you expect anything. Right. But if you go on outreach with a Christ-centered perspective, something, something is going to happen. Amen. Come on, let's praise the Lord right now. Oh, something. hallelujah. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. We must understand we cannot do anything as the scripture states, without living and move and, uh, and having our being in him, we can't do anything without him. We lift up your hands, Lord, and thank the Lord for this message. You know, it amazes me, even in the Old Testament, we see some things, amen, that they understood, Abraham understood this. It's amazing, throughout the Word of God. Matter of fact, if we read about Solomon and some of the things that he did, he built the first temple. He had a God-centered perspective. What caused
call a janitor and build that temple? What drove him? It was a God-centered perspective. Mm -hmm. What drove Abraham? Mm -hmm. It was God-centered perspective. Mm -hmm. What drove Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? A God-centered mm -hmm. perspective. Yes, Lord. That's when you're going to see miracles. Hello? Yeah. Hallelujah. You simply have a God centered perspective. You know, the Lord touched somebody mighty this morning. He said, it. You would have saw it if you had a God centered perspective. When you have a God centered perspective, you know what the Lord does? He share with you. He'll share with you what's going on. And simply by having a God-centered perspective. Will you clap your hands up the Lord? Oh, hallelujah. Because of the death and burial and resurrection, we can have, actually have a lot of life in Jesus Christ. If folks can actually misinterpret an abundant life is all about. I'm going to tell you something. You'll never come in contact with what abundant life is without having a Christ city. Amen, amen. Hello. It's, you know, it, it's, uh, it's powerful, folks. It'll be things that you touch that God messes. Yeah. Uh, that's how the Lord works. Yeah. Christ in us yeah. is the hope of life. Glory. Glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Having a Christ centered perspective, yeah. even when you reach out and touch somebody, amen, they can receive their healing. Because yeah. you have a Christ centered perspective that God can heal them. Will you clap your hands up to the Lord? Clap your hands.
I've seen some situations in Oklahoma. My dear friend, we would go to a fellowship meeting. After service, we'd start walking. And nobody would shake our head. My dear friend said, I know how to break them out of habit. He caught him and he ran up to him and squeezed him and said, I love you, brother. My goodness. He would run. And it, it got to the point after a fellowship meeting, folks would see it and they'd try to run. And he'd run over and catch him. And grab, I love you, brother. I'm talking about having a Christ centered perspective. Oh, glory. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I see when alcoholics came to church, you could smell it on their breath. Uh -huh. yes. Nobody would go down to the altar to pray with them. But they let you come into church and you got some money. You get a front row seat. But having a Christ centered perspective, the door is open to drunks, prostitutes, liars, cheats. Come on, a Christ centered perspective church. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I made up in my mind. So I'm going to live for him and I'm going to die for him. Some of us need to make up in our mind that we're going to live for Christ. Hello? This ain't tip tap. Praise the Lord. Are you in it for real? Come on and preach, preacher. Are you in it for real? Or are you just messing around? Praise God. There's some young people out there that's wanting to hear the good news. There's some adults out there that want to hear the good news. Some of them, we've been rubbing our shoulders. Yeah. Are you ashamed of the gospel? Uh -huh. Hello? Yeah. 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 We talk about everything else. It's the gospel. We gotta make it real, folks. Not just coming to church. You know, Sunday morning, Sunday night. Come to prayer. Bible say, let's make it real. Do you know if we mount up? Christ centered perspective that we can have visitors on Wednesday. Yeah. 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 Huh? 
We live and move in our being because of you, God. Yes. I'm looking for some folks to, to commit to having a self centered respect, a Christ self centered respect. Are you going to be honest or do you come? If you're not going to be honest, then stay where you are. All the Lord needs is a few folks to be honest and say, I want it. I want it. He kaya to hori and that kaya ta. Oh, he kaya to hori and that kaya ta. I want it. I want a Christ in it perspective. Use me, Lord, for your glory. Use me, Lord, for your glory. He kaya to shalabaka. Use me, Lord, for your glory. He kaya to shalabakoriyamaka. Use me, Lord, for your glory. He kaya to horiyamaka. No, he kaya to shilabaka yataba. Yil to shila kaya to ho. Naya to kira makaya to mila kaya tabaka. Praise God, praise God, praise God. One more thing to add. What will keep you in the church is a Christ-centered perspective. That will keep you in the church. Christ-centered perspective. Matter of fact, it will cause you not to look at pornography. Amen. Hello? Cause you not to hang around folks that's cussing and all that mess. You'll be particular about who you associate yourself with. I'm going to be very honest, but I ain't going to let this anybody come in my house. Praise God. Having a Christ centered perspective. I'm going to be very honest also. There are folks out here that they look like they're normal, but they're full of devils. That's the truth. That, amen. That is the truth. But having a Christ-centered perspective, you can discern it. Uh-huh. Hello? You can discern it. Because when you got the Holy Ghost, God has given us the ability to discern some things, and the only way you can draw strength in that particular area, you've got to be in this book. And have a Christ-centered perspective, and you'll be able to discern some things. Praise God. I do. I hope something tonight. In Jesus' name. Will you clap your hands on the Lord one more time? You dismiss in Jesus' name.